Smash Factor. Factor. This he's just driven the green. He yep. has just driven the green. I guess hello world, huh? Welcome everybody to the Smash Factor Week 41 on the 2021-2022 PGA Tour. Week one of the FedEx Cup playoffs at the St. Jude Classic in Memphis, Tennessee. Gonna be a fun week. Uh, absolutely a great week last week, a tremendous week for the community all the way around. Uh, the, the little Gup's Corner community heater continues. Uh, was probably our best week to date in this little heater, a little four or five, six week stretch of just, you know, tons of green screens. We finally got it outright again. I've been hitting some first round leaders, but we got the Tom Kim outright 33 to one. So good momentum heading into for me, will be the Fantasy Golf World Championship Finals, live finals in Memphis. I will fly in there um, Thursday afternoon, I think, around when I land. Um, so it's going to be a fun week all the way together. Obviously, uh, we'll recap last week real quick, real quick, hit some promos, listener league stuff, and then we'll get right into it. Uh, great week for me. Took tied for third in the that th- the, they've had it for about three or four weeks now. I like it. It's a three, 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 uh, f- uh, five max only. I only put a bullet in it. Um, first time I've tied something like that, that high up and all six of my golfers with the guy that finished third with me were different than his. I'd never, doesn't matter how much the money we're playing for. I'm just talking about like that, that high of a point total. Um, you know, it's kind of unusual. I've, I've seen ties before, but not one of our golfers were the same. It was kind of weird how that worked out. Um, was smashing with about six holes left in the, in the day. Uh, still had a great week, you know, four or five X my money. Um, but I had two, three, four, 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 four that I was winning. And plus I was, I was in second in that contest solo second in the three, 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 three. So it was way up. And then Davis Riley, man, that, that, I mean, we talked about it all the time. He, you know, he's, Kind of reminds me of Cam Davis in a sense. You know, they score, but, man, they got those bogeys and doubles coming out there, and he, and he did it. Um, was looking good on the front nine. I think he came out three or four under. Uh, had got up there T3 or so with Henley. Um, thought, man, he, he's going. Stallings was finishing kind of strong. Um, had, had a good – obviously, I had Kim in it um, who won it. And then when he went bogey, double, and a bogey. Uh, luckily, I think he got one or two birdies after that to kind of climb back up a little bit. But uh, – I can't complain. It was a great week. Betting-wise, like I said, we hit Tom Kim. I'll get that recapped like I do when we do on Wednesday. Tons of shout-outs to the community. MU Redhawk, 600 bucks into $20,000. Uh, just an awesome week for him. I think he got a 444 ticket for next week at the BMW as well. Omaha 11, uh, fifth place in the $200 single entry for $7,500. Um, he got a 444 ticket in another contest. So, we have some Gubs Corner representation next week for the BMW No Cut event. That'll be kind of a, a different Millie Maker kind of to strategize with, uh, not having to worry about trying to get six through. Uh, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there next week. We got to worry about this week first. Uh, C by C B Y R O M 1458 had a huge four figure week. Gas Boat won a, a GC. OG original. He's been around for a while. I see him at the top of leaderboards all the time. He had another four figure week. Clark Kaufman took second in a dollar single entry for 250 bucks. Plus he had some more hits on his deal. Uh, there's a ton of people in there. I could keep going on and on, but super happy for everybody that had a big hit. Let's roll it into another week this week. NFL, or excuse me, use the code NFL, just NFL playing. That's it. You get 30% off any package right now. We will run this promo through week one of the season. Get, includes a seven-day risk-free trial. Uh, had a ton of people sign up last week uh, for the trial, so I hope they all stayed. We'll see. <laughs> Again, you can cancel anytime you want. Uh, some sign up, they cancel immediately, and I've had a couple that reach out, you know, about day six and go, hey, I canceled immediately just because I was a little wary, uh, but I actually like it. You know, can I 
how can I get back in or how do I do this? Cause I'd already canceled and, and I can fix that for you. Obviously I would just say, wait it out till like day six or so. And you can just cancel you, you never get charged. Um, but come join us now. Um, it's going to be a fun three weeks of the FedEx cup, uh, tourney or playoffs right here. Plus college football and NFL right around the corner. We got tons of stuff, uh, down the road for that. I'll do giveaways week one of the NFL week kickoff week rate and review us on iTunes that gets you in for free. These will be drawings like I normally do for the, um, the majors in golf. I'll probably grab some swag at the, at the FedEx St. Jude FedEx, uh, along with some of the stuff I already have subscribe to us on YouTube, like this video and in the comment section, tell me your favorite play in the 10 K and up range. We do get an 11 K back this week. Rory right at 11 K flat. So tell me your favorite play. That'll get you into the drawing. Um, so those are easy ways to get into those free drawings. Listener League, I went ahead and ran it this week. Um, so it's back up. Link is in the description. The winner of this won't really go anywhere, but when I don't run it, the community kind of gets a little, uh, not frustrated, but they want to play in it every week. So I went ahead and ran it, even though I will be sending out the invite to everybody that has qualified for the uh, League of Champions finales. Wednesday's pod, I'll announce kind of the prizes. We'll do a you know, mixed pack of prizes and stuff, fun stuff. It's fun to, you know, I think there's probably 35-ish or so, 34, 35 guys in there. Um, so it'll kind of be like, you know, the Fantasy Golf World Championship, there's 40 of us, uh, 40 lineups, I should say. I think there's 27 actual people. A few guys have, uh, I think three guys have two lineups. There's a three lineup guy, and I think two guys have five each. So, um wrap that up this week and then then we'll focus on NFL as far as it, I'm still deciding if I'm gonna do the listener league I'll, I'll wait on the feedback from from the community and stuff um got to get them full and all that I, I hate you know having a rush on all that kind of stuff but uh, if we, we've been filming them lately since I kind of said that um you know because it, it is a lot of work and I got to work with DK and all that so let's keep that rolling into NFL season um if you were if you won a league or one of one of the weekly leagues you should get your invite either tonight or tomorrow uh, our winner last week was Clap 66, 615 points. I will send him his invite as well. Uh, Willie Z, Kim, Riley, Moore, Stallings, and Taryn. Uh, solid lineup was actually a 2v2 of what I did for my bullet this week. Um, he went Willie Z and Moore. And I think I went Keith Mitchell and Billy Ho, which you would think I'd have been on the Willie Z side of that, but... Um, you know, it went a little bit different there. Great lineup for him. I hope he had a bunch of other stuff. A little small shout out to Gas Boat. He also finished, I mentioned him above, but he finished second and sixth this week. Uh, so good showing for him as well. This week, like I said, we're in Memphis. TPC Southwind, par 70, 7,239 yards, four par threes, two par fives. Both par fives are reachable by most. Joys of Fairways, Bermuda Rough and Greens. Um, Joys, if you're not familiar with it, it's one of the most pure fairways to hit out of. I have a couple courses I've played around here that have them. I love playing it. Um, it's definitely a different, different way of hitting off uh, those fairways. Uh, they're pure. They're nice. Uh, Bermuda rough and, and greens, like I said. Last year, this was the week after the Olympics. There's going to be a lot of nuances with, with um, this course. is set up to depend on which site you use. Make sure you're looking at the right history. Um, you know, some – Sites are defaulting this to the Northern Trust because this year or last year, this was the last three years. This was a WGC no cut event. Um, so this had nothing to do with the playoffs. And then 2018 before this was just a full field normal event on the schedule um, was actually one of the I don't think it was ever the fall swing. I can't remember, uh, but it was a, you know, a weaker field event for sure uh, before moving to the WGC. And now it's the first round of the playoffs. Um, and we only have three weeks of the playoffs instead of four. Uh, starting this year. So make sure when you're looking at all that, my rankings that I put out for the community, uh, the history I used was the last six years played at this course. Um, so that's what mattered to me. Whether Monday evening or yeah, tonight, it's already evening for me, but tonight through about early morning Thursday, there's 40 to 60% chance of off and on scouted showers. Um, actual tourney looks nice. May, Thursday morning, we may have a little bit of rain, uh, hanging over. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But other than that, it looks great. It's going to be humid, hot, sunny. Um, I say hot, it's high eighties, low 90, which, you know, today up here, I think it was 105, 104 yesterday. It was like 103. It's been super hot here as well. So this will feel like a little cool down. Uh, I know it'll have humid, but we definitely have some humidity here as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. I don't, 
it's early. We'll have to kind of see what that system does and when it's moving out and the winds and softness. Um, could potentially have an AM, PM type of an advantage. Um, you know, guys that go out early, fresh with some, you know, if that rain in super early in the morning and they get soft, we'll see. Um, way too early right now to worry about that. We'll talk about that as we get into sun or Wednesday. Cut number, I went back to the non-WGC, obviously, because those are no-cut events. I think it's going to be around even or minus one. It's kind of where I have it. Um, it's, you know, it's been hot there. Similar, you know, it's basically just due west or east of me. Um, and I can probably, I, I looked it up the other day. I think it's like a six, seven hour drive. If I was going to drive it, I'm obviously flying this week, but um, just basically almost straight due, due east. Super hot. So it's probably going to be firm, um, fast and firm for the most part. The rough will be interesting to kind of see when we look at pressers and stuff like that. Normally, this is similar to last week where being in the fairway gives you a lot better chance to get on the green. Bermuda rough's always tough and tricky to hit out of. Obviously, they have sprinklers on that. They probably have water in it. I'll, I'll be interested to see how thick they have it um, and kind of hearing what the players are talking about. But in general, history here, uh, you want to be hitting out of the fairways. Um, last three winners during the no-cut event was Answer, Brooks, and JT. Before that, when it was a regular event, we had DJ back in 2018. He won by six strokes over Putnam. Uh, then before that, we had Berger, Berger, Gomez, Crane, Harris Inglis, DJ again. Um, some runner-ups in there. Stallings, um, Stricker, Lefty, Lefty, Brooks, uh, Schwartzel. I said Putnam. So you can kind of see, you know, who who – all kinds of guys, different guys right there that, that have done well here. So I think there's many different ways to you can attack this course and definitely be successful here. Stats I'm looking at, good drives, uh, stroke gain irons, scoring opportunities inside 18 feet, bogey avoidance, par four DK scoring, and good approach. I don't think I said um, – yeah, so – yeah, four par threes, two par fives. I did say that. So 12 par four. So that's kind of why, you know, I'm, I was looking at that. Um New to the course, so guys that have never played this in the last six years, this course, not this event, um, there's 35 guys in there that, that haven't seen it. Um, salary range is definitely, I would say, a hybrid of what they've been trying to do versus the old way. Definitely bumped it up, the, the 10K range, seven. <laughs> We've seen as low as four lately. Um, but still only 21 guys, 8K and above. So that's kind of what we've seen. That's what we saw last week, pretty much, I think, almost dead on. We definitely have as many bottom because there's only a hundred I think 22 guys. Now I think burgers out, um, Fleetwood's out. And there was one more that I think that I think is withdrawn. So I think it's 122 we'll wind up with. So you would think could be a high six to six, but it only takes one or two chalk pieces missing to, to change that. Um, six in the nine K range eight in the AK range, 35 in the seven K range and 66 in the six K range. Um, sweet 16 for me. If you're new to the pod, I do my favorite three in each salary range and a bubble boy. I do a fate of the week, a sleeper of the week, gut feel plays of the week, uh, betting top five, of the pop and two long shots provided by price picks. And then we kind of wrap it up and I'll come back Wednesday and I'll do Deep dive and final thoughts. You know, we get a lot more information. I do my deep dives on Tuesday, Tuesday evening, kind of get all that information, uh, get a first look at ownership. How's that looking? Uh, bring it all together on Wednesday and kind of kind of summarize the week and how we're looking in uh, to final thoughts, you know, more likely than not. <clears throat> 9K and above. Uh, I'm going to start with Cam Young. Uh, man, he's just playing so good. Uh, second at the Open, second at RMC. <clears throat> Rocket, Mortgage, Rocket Mortgage Classic. Obviously, he's never played here. Um, Stat-wise, first and good drive, second and good approach, which are two of my most important. 21st in stroke and irons. So it tells me when he doesn't have a good approach, he can still do good around the green. That combo of that, top 21 there. Um, he's 34th in Bermuda putting, third in recent form, uh, fifth in stats overall, second in my model completely. 9,300 feels like a good price. Um, you know, I like him a lot this week right now. We'll see. You know, I could see the narrative of his game maybe, you know, more off the tee and, you know, but when he's number one in good drives, it tells me he puts it in play and, and it's going to give himself chances. Now, his irons, you know, maybe aren't as the best, but then I look at good approach. He's second in the field right now. You know, we'll, we'll see how the deep dive shakes out. And popularity this week will, will mean a big difference. Um, but I think it's going to be fairly flat. Anytime this is kind of a major-esque pricing field, you got a lot to pick from up there. 
that it normally spreads out where we don't just see one or two guys getting super hyped up. Um, but I'm going to start with Cam Young. Next, Willie Z. Uh, played him last week. Not He wasn't in my, you know, he was in my core. He, he did finally make it the final core article I put out as, as the last guy. Um, been playing well. We know about the caddy deal. You know, the, is, that a, is that a boost to him? You know, maybe he's, you know, some stress gone, fresh. You know, he's already got the guy picked out he's going to do with. Um, went eagle, eagle on the back nine, actually like the last six holes to make the cut, uh, and a birdie to come in. It kind of, he was started minus three, um, on, on, you know, round three and then started with a double again. He had, he, he had a bogey and a double almost every round this, this week had a lot of birdies though. So he scored well last three tournaments, 21st, 20th and 28th and eighth here last year, you know, so that tells me all I need to know. And while the putting can be quote unquote, I mean, he's in the mid pack of this field when I look at the Bermuda putting right now. So I don't hate that either. 9,500, good price, good starting price. Uh, the next two I could flip flop one way or the other. And it's Rory and JT. Um, I'll probably only be on one and maybe we'll come down to ownership. I'm interested to see my gut says JT will be higher. Um, he won here two years ago. He had a 12th and a 26 outside of that. Stat wise, he's number one in my model. He's $800 cheaper. Um, but Rory's been on fire. He's been playing tremendous, you know, but he is the highest price. And, and, and I feel like this, I, I tend to think people want to be as hybrid balanced or balanced build as possible. Uh, but we'll see, we'll kind of see how it goes throughout the weekend. I mean, throughout the next 48 hours when we get to Wednesday, but Rory hasn't done horrible here, a fourth, a 47th and a 12th. Um, he's, he's number three in my stat model, top 27 or better in every single stat category, category, Four top four, tens in categories. So fourth in good drives, ninth in irons, seventh in par four DK scoring, ninth in good approach, third at the open. We saw that. Um, you know, so all together, I like Rory a hair more. Ownership will kind of dictate who's the bubble boy there for me. But JT right now is the official bubble boy um, at 10-2. Third, 53rd at the open. He didn't really do much there, but made the weekend. He has great history here. Fifth in overall course history for me. 11th, 14th, 9th, 7th, 5th, and 4th in all six of the categories I'm looking at. Really comes down to putting. He's 105th in Bermuda putting on this field, in this field, the way that I, I kind of run that model. Kind of see what the deep dive looks like tomorrow, and, and those two will kind of be a coin flip for me the way it sits now. Um, AK range, Sungjae, I'm going to go right back there. I assume he's going to be popular. We'll see. But I'm all, there's another name that I'll get to in the, in the fade section that I wonder how people are going to treat that. So I'm just playing great. Uh, he just ran into a buzzsaw of Tom Kim, who I can't talk enough about that kid. You know, I was on him five long time ago. <laughs> he was doc of the week at 6,400 bucks and 1% before I, I think anybody in this industry was talking about him. Uh, so, you know, to start quad and I had a few little chirps in my DMS uh, real quick. Cause he was my number one play of the week last year. Or one of them. Um, one of my top plays, I obviously had the bet on him. Um, but that's, that's normal Thursday tilt, but, um, boy, did he fight back and fight back? I mean, so he won by what one of one by three strokes with the quad pretty impressive. I know he had the putter going, but he still had a good week T to green. Like it wasn't just putting. Cause you got to think he won by three strokes with a quad. So he dominated this field outside of one hole. Um, you know, but Sung Jay played well, second, a second at, uh, 3M. I feel like he shook off some rust. He had the open, the overseas, all that. He had the whole issue from, remember when he couldn't play? I think it was either the PDA Championship or the U.S. Open. He couldn't play in because the COVID situation, we don't really know. I think he's on fire right now. And for 8500 man, that, that's a great price. Just okay here. You got to remember, if you're looking at my rankings, the last three years, there was no cut. So, like, when you see 46th and 35th, you're kind of like, ah, he's just average here. So, that's the only negative for him. But, man, he's coming in a great form. I, I like where he's at, and I like his game altogether. Second for me, I'm, I, it'd probably be Tom Kim. I'm going to go back there. Is our little worry in his uh, schedule? And, and, obviously, he probably didn't – he had to win. This is kind of the uh, Willie Z deal from last year that he had to win. But one, when he won, which was the last chance he could, he's now 30-something in the FedEx because the FedEx points are there. He gets all the points that he had. But because of his special exemption status, like like Willie had last year, he had to win to get to get eligible for the for this playoffs, and he did it right. And so, but his last four weeks: forty seventh at the Open, twenty sixth at the RM, seventh at the Rocket Mortgage, first at the Wyndham. But he's young. I mean, you got to think the the 
momentum, the, the, you know, just all the joy he has right now that he can go out there and I don't know about this week. I think this week I'm okay playing him. I, I'll be interested to see how many people, ah, I'm not going to play. He's going to be worn out, tired. He won. He's in. Um, and he's, I'm not saying a lock, but he's pretty solid in the top 70. So he's going to make it to the BMW. I, I don't even know if he could fall out. I think he's 33rd or something in FedEx, but with another solid week, a top 20 or so, he could probably lock himself up to East Lake and, and get inside that top 30, which would be huge for him. Guarantee Muddy up there. Um, he's number one in Bermuda putting, 17 in recent form, um, you know, fifth in opportunities inside 18 foot, uh, feet, second in par four DK scoring, 39th in good approach, um, 48th in bogey avoidance. Probably, you know, would be one of the, but he's 8,000. That's the deal. Like, he got a little bit of a bump, but not much. Actually, I think he was 86 last week. Obviously, this is a much stronger field, but the question for me will be how popular does he get now? I mean, he, he's paid me off 10 times over. I can move off him in like a core type play, but I'll still probably play him in, at least in my MME stuff this week for sure. Um, next up, Billy Ho. I played him last week. He's $2,100 cheaper now. He had a 27th and really struggled to get going, but then he kind of got hot. For a little bit, I think it was round three was his best round. Um, finished pretty decent on Sunday at 27th after – that was his first competitive tournament since the Open. Knock off some rust there early on Monday – I mean, on Thursday last week. Then got get, got going a little bit. His history here is pretty good. A fourth, a 51st, a ninth, a 25th, and a 17th. And that fourth and 51st is when it was a cut event. So, two made cuts and then obviously three straight top 25 or betters. Uh, in the WGC era, I, I like him a lot and I like the price. And, and maybe he goes kind of, he's never going to pop in stat models. I, I just kind of figured that out. I think I talked about that some last week where I was like, when it's an event for him or you like him, he's one, and there's several of those guys that just, they have enough law in their games that they're never just going to pop. Um, but I like where he's at, you know, 12th in Bermuda putting, 22nd in the course fit. You know, I, I think he's coming in really good form. And I think the price drop is tremendous there. Bubble Boy for me is Neiman. Um, Probably most is, and I'm interested kind of here with the industry take is on these guys that this is their first tournament since the open. So your Mito's, your worries, your JT's, um, especially the guys Neiman, um, who could quasi use this week as a, let me shake off the rust, get going. I'm pretty far up your worries. JT's again, I think they're here to win. No doubt about it, but let me do well this week, maybe make the cut, have, have a run on the weekend, because um, I'm good. I'm probably already almost into the top 30. I, Neiman's not necessarily, but he's up there. It, it, that I'm interested if there's any talk about that in the industry-wise to say, all right, which of these guys that maybe even in a four-week playoff type atmosphere that we had last year may not even play this week. They take this week, or maybe they play. I mean, you know, there was a lot of that that went around. With only three weeks, most guys are playing every week now. Um Neiman, that, that's probably my only worry. Is there any rust there? Um, he's done decent here. N nothing great. He missed a cut in 2018. Obviously, that was when he turned um, pro that, that summer. 52nd in 2020, so almost last in that no-cut event. But then last year, he came here and got 17th. Uh, 53rd at the Open, nothing great there. All that's why he's the bubble boy. You know, I'm a Neiman guy. I've loved him since, you know, 2018 when I saw him as an amateur at the Masters. Um that all that kind of package there and he tends to get popularity. And so that's a guy I can kind of wait and see on uh, when we get to Wednesday, maybe he makes the MME pool. I don't know if he goes up into a core play, but I certainly like Neiman this week just to keep an eye on once we get to Wednesday, if he's gonna be super popular with all that kind of, for me, I may, you know, be light on him or wait till next week type of deal. Seven K range, Man, I feel nervous about keep riding this train, but but Stallings, I, I don't know how I can't. I mean, a 10th at the Rocket Mortgage, a 13th last week. Um, he's been in my bullet bill both those weeks. He hasn't played a WGC here, but you go back to when it was St. Jude uh, normal, made the cut his last three times, got better each year, a 41st, a 37th, a 30th. So he's shown, you know, he like, kind of likes this play. Stat-wise, he looks incredible right now. He's 26th in Bermuda putting. Um, I just don't, there's nothing for me to hate. I, it's just like, and I think he's underpriced for the way he's been playing coming in, you know, pretty hot. I, I, I like him again at 7,100 bucks. Pendrith. That's a guy I played last week that most were off of. I, I used the analogy last week of remember when everybody got off of Cam Young and Cam Davis at RBC because of 
this doesn't fit him. Yeah, well, talent's talent and pedigree's pedigree. And I think he's one of those type of guys. He finished 13th, you know, so he did well for me. Um, it, it, you know, some of his strengths d- aren't, weren't the best last week, but he got it all done. You know, does he make a core play? I don't know. We'll see if we get there, but I definitely like the form he's got coming in. Second at the Rocket Mortgage, 13th at the Wyndham. Um, he's going to be good on the good drive. It's really going to come down the iron and putting for him. You know, can he keep it going? You know, I like the 13th last week. You got to look at a short-term firm, form with him type of deal because um, a lot of his stats are going to be bringing in from when he was, you know, because he had that big break. And so it, it's really, that's more of a gut feel type play, but, but I like him. So I'm going to be stay on him at 7,600 bucks. Davis Riley, a, a guy that a lot of people didn't want to back-to-back miss cuts. You know, did he have his shine? And now he was done last week. I, I stayed on him. Um, made my bullet last week, my main bullet. Finished 13th. I talked about it at the top of the pod. You know, the back nine, you know, could have been better, but still played well. I think he can show right back up here and do the same thing this week. Um, a little worried, you know, his bogey avoidance. I mentioned that he's 76 in the field, you know, so in the bottom half. Um, 76 in par four DK scoring. Worries me just a hair, but 19th on good approach, 20th in stroke and irons, 26th in, in good drives, uh, 51st in Bermuda putting. So not the, you know, not great, but he's in the top half. So there's enough there at 7,700 bucks that he definitely has uh, my eye on him as a potential core play again this week. The one I didn't think I would really get to, but um, Reavy, 7,100 bucks is the bubble boy. I'm interested to see if he's popular this week. Um, his last four tournaments here, a fourth, a sixth, a 27th and a sixth. So three top sixes, uh, and a 27th pretty good. Made the cut at the 3M and last week didn't do much with it. A 49th and a 47th stat wise, you know, he's going to be in the fairway. He's not going to be long, but then the other stats, 18th, 12th, 18th, 18th. So I didn't think he's going to pop up like that for me. Uh, Bermuda putting is 121st. So that'd probably be the one negative, but it, I kind of, when I see that, the first thing I normally do is, well, how has he put it here? And, and that kind of trumps it for me. And that normally comes out in the deep dive tomorrow, but I'm just going to guess that. But when he got a fourth, a sixth, and a sixth here, I think he'll be all right. Um, I like, I kind of like him this week. 7,100 bucks. We'll see if he gets talked about. That's the only reason why I kind of have the bubble boy. Um, you know, he got the win a few weeks ago on the, I think it was the alternate event, if, I'm, if I remember that correctly. So, and those stats, are, you know, normally aren't, ingrained in that kind of stuff. So he'll be a guy that kind of moves up as we get closer to Wednesday as well. 6K range, uh, kick it off with Strowman. I've been on him pretty recently. Missed the cut last week, 49th at uh, Rocket Mortgage. Had a 35th here two years ago uh, when he made the WGC event. Has not played here at all outside of that. Stats look great. You know, at that price, he's just a guy that I don't know if anybody in the 6K range will will – I'll be too high on this week because I think there's a lot of good plays in the seven, a, a lot of balanced plays. I do think there'll be some eye candy in the 6K range because your people are coming off these guys in that 6 and 7K range were like $2,000 more or $1,500 more the last few weeks when it was a little bit better uh, or a weaker field. Now you have a star-studded field up top, and these guys are, oh, he's only 6,700. So there's some of that. We'll kind of see who shifts up to the – be the popular ones, but he's a guy I think steady. I like his, you know, most of the stats that he's coming in here, third in opportunities inside 18 feet, 11th in bogey avoidance, 11th in good approach, 19th in par four DK story, six, 700 bucks. You know, I, I like Stroman on, you know, a, a good amount this week. Um, next up, Steven Yeager. He's been paying off people. Well, I'll be honest. I wasn't on him uh, the last couple of weeks. He had a fifth and a 13th. He kept it rolling last week, looking really good. I did watch quite a bit of him. Uh, he's seventh in good approach, fourth in opportunities at 18 feet, seventh in irons. Pretty solid for 6,600 bucks this week. Uh, 42nd in Bermuda putting. For this price, he's got high upside. You know, make a cut. Can he give you that top 30 upside? I think he can. Uh, I like him at 6,600. Smalley was a guy I had plenty of last week. Um, really, what was it? was a reboot. He was one of the reboot victims. So when he came out Saturday morning to finish his round two, I believe that's what it was. He shot like four over or something crazy. Cause like, I was like, where's Smalley go? Um, or maybe, no, no, no. You know what it was? It was, it was Sunday morning. So when he had to finish his third round because they got, you know, the, they had a delay Saturday. There's so many delays this week, but delay Saturday darkness came up on him. 
he had to come out Sunday morning, finish his third round, and he shot like three or four over on his, those seven or eight holes he had to do, drop down the board, but then climb back up, you know, to 13th again. So I really like that. I think this course has some similarities as last week. So at six, 800 bucks, you know, I think he can come out here and perform well. I, I like him. I like him in general. Uh, so at that price, I definitely have some shares. And then Taryn, um, my final decision in my bullet last week was Taylor Moore or Taryn. It was a real coin flip to me. I, I kept thinking Taylor Moore was going to get more steamed up than what he did. I like Taryn. I, I've been riding him the last few weeks, so I went with him. Obviously, that was a probably several thousand dollar mistake because Moore outdid him. But although Taryn finished super strong, so that's what I do like about him. Only reason why he's a bubble boy is, A, I, I had to make a bubble boy in this range, but maybe he picks up some steam uh, with that finish last week. Um, 7th, 20th, and 27th, his last three tournaments. He's kind of like Pendrith, just playing really well, riding a heater, uh, 28th in Bermuda putting, so I like that. I, you know, he's going to be right there in my player pool. Um, can he make a core play? Potentially. Uh, he's on that small list for me down here in that 6K range uh, for sure. Fate of the week. Uh, right now it's more Cala. I'm interested to see how this looks come Wednesday. Um, I will make my final fate of the week on Wednesday. I, I have changed that before. Just kind of, sometimes I'm way off on Monday and I'm like, this guy's gonna be popular. And we get to Wednesday. I'm like, nobody's on this guy. Um, man, I, this is what I, this is the guy that I think the sticker price can really get people talking, uh, not only in the betting world, but, but you know, 8,700 for more cow. Wow, when's the last time we saw that? Um, he finished 26 and 20th here the last two years. His irons, when they're on, you know, as good as anybody's, he should be able to put the ball on the fairway. But man, you just look at his recent stats, or not even recent. I, I you know, th my whole model, they're not good at all. Now, he hasn't played since the open, he missed the cut. Does he have the talent and pedigree to come here and show up and, and be good? Absolutely. Is a discounted price going to get him the ownership is my biggest thing. If he's still going to come in like he was those last several weeks at 8, 9, 10%, one of the lowest owned, but then he was 9,500, 10,000, 10, 2, whatever it was, a lot higher. Okay, by Wednesday, I could be on an 8% more cow at 8,700 bucks. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to be the eye candy of the week where everybody's like, I mean, which I hope because it would take away from like Sung Jay at 85. I'd play Sung Jay over more cow all day, every day right now. Um, He's a guy we'll see what happens come Wednesday with that ownership. Sleeper of the week for me, um, I'm going to go Stuart Sink. Been playing him quite a bit um, lately. He's been playing well. I think he's got – I just lost him for a second. Let's see. Yeah. Miscut at the open, but then 24th, 57th, 27th. You know, so three straight made cuts, two top 27s. Um, his history here. Back in 2016, 65th, made the cut, uh, then a 10th and a 4th. Last year at the WGC, a 43rd. So one could say probably not as strong of fields. Back in 16 through 18, he did well. Last year, played in WGC, barely over half. I mean, a little under, you know, half the field. Not great. But at 6,600 bucks, you know, I, I just like him. I think he's been playing well. Um, at least on this course, he's shown the upside. Back in 2018, that was the year DJ won by six. He finished fourth. Um 17, I believe, was when Berger, or maybe, I think it was 17, when Ber Berger went back-to-back. -back. I think it was 16, 17, but 10th. Is he going to do that this week? I, I don't know, but I'm not going to have a whole ton of 6K guys, and he's one that, that I kind of like this week and, and keep riding um, some of his form that he's had of, as of late. Gut feel plays to me. Uh, I'm going to go to Connors. Had a good Sunday. He's one that made it on the, that, the minus one cut that we had. Um, finished 21st. Pretty good history here. Decent history here, I should say. Made the cut in 2018. Didn't do much with it. 27, 30, 36. My big decision last week, and I talked about it on Wednesday's pod, was either Henley or Connors. Henley or Connors. I wind up going with Henley. Um, and I like Henley, you know, just as well this week. But, uh, you know, I, th I think Connors could do well here. You know, this is a place where putting isn't as important, as emphasized. Um, but if he's going to be higher owned or high owned, I, I can move off that. But as of now, I like Connors a lot, 7,600 bucks. JT Poston, $7,300. Just been playing really well as of late. Another top 20 finish. Oh, we actually 21st last week. Um, 2018, he finished 18th here. 2020, he got to play in the WGC, finished 30th. So a little bit better than half the field. An 11th at the 3M. Stat-wise, is looking pretty good. 12th on iron, 6th on bogey avoidance, 29th in par, DK, par 4 DK scoring, 32nd good approach. So solid stats there for a $7,300 guy. I like him uh, this week. 
in any kind of track like this, which is similar to last week's. So, you know, I don't mind playing posting again. Aaron Wise is a guy I didn't play last week. He was close uh, for me, but didn't do it. Finished 13th. Seems like that putter is continually getting a little bit better since he's kind of made some changes. Not He's never played it, though, the last six years. So that was my one kind of negative. He's another guy that I probably wouldn't play if super popular. Um, I could move to Henley, who's right there at 7800 bucks. Those two are really kind of a coin flip to me. But I do like his upside. And he's coming in really good form as well. Uh, last, Cam Davis. You know, I, I like Cam in general. Probably having some a lot of showdown. Um, coming in really good form. A 16th at 3M, 14th at Rocket Mortgage. Only played here once last year in the WGC. Finished 60th, so that's a little bit of a concern. That'll I'll have to deep dive into. That's why he didn't make it up into the, um, the Sweet 16 core type plays. But 7200 bucks, a guy that can score, you know, like with anybody. We know that. Bogey avoidance has actually improved with him as of late. Not He's still not top of the field or anything, but better. Um, I just like the form he's coming in with. So it's kind of one of those form versus, all right, one year here last year. How'd that look? How was his form? That, that's all that stuff I'll do in the deep dive for. But for 7200 bucks, I definitely will play some Cam Davis this week. Betting top five, the pop and two long shots provided by Prize Picks. Use the code GUP. Link is in the description. 100% match, dollar for dollar, up to 100 bucks. Um, I like Cam Young, 25. Sung Jay, 35 to 1. Willie Z, 25. Davis Riley, 90. Billy Ho, 50, 55 in some spots. Um, two long shots. Stallings, you know, probably could be a top 20 bet, top 5 bet type of deal as well, but 100 to 1. Uh, just that form coming in. And the guy I didn't talk about above, um, and I saved him for this, is Mito. So Mito's writing that deal with, I kind of mentioned earlier with Neiman and all those guys, is. Four missed cuts, but if you remember, we go back, uh, even when they were going on, he, like, missed on the number, missed on the number. Um, you know, had, like, a you know three that were right on the number right there. Um, I don't think – I think the open, he just missed the cut. But played well, uh, which is why he'll still pop in models and all that. I just – you know, is there anything else going on? You know, we hadn't seen him since the open, that type of deal, the rust type factor, plus the missed cuts. Now, I think we may get a super low own Mito, which would be nice – but I like the 125 to one. If I want to just not invest in the DK side per se, I don't mind the long shot 125 to one. Um, and I'll probably still could have him in DK. We'll see what happens by the time we get to Wednesday. Uh, but he's a guy that long shot type number, you know, he's got that capability that we've seen. Of course should suit his game really well. I don't mind that at all. One and done. I'll go over Wednesday uh, per usual. Obviously, at this point, I did have Kim in my, my main one last week, so I jumped up. I, I'm not going to win anything as far as, like, top, but I could cash, get some min cash, which should, you know, pay for the year, and I'll take it. Um, this point in time, you got three weeks left, so you're playing the top three guys you think you have left, and, and then we'll play all three, uh, no doubt, but we'll talk about that a little bit Wednesday. Uh, I have been doing E9 in the last few weeks by myself. Had a lot of great feedback on that. Um, I think Kenny may be able to join this week. Uh, definitely be uh, an intense E9. We got a lot going on that night and then building that that bullet for the Fantasy Golf World Championship, try to bring the million dollars home uh, to the community. It'll be awesome. So I'll be doing E9 no matter what that night. Uh, maybe get Kenny to hop on with me as we have the first week of the playoffs. Don't forget, NFL, 30% off any package. It is locked for life in case I forgot to say that. So when you sign up with us, as long as you don't cancel, you get that 30% off for life. Seven-day risk-free trial is included in that automatically. All you have to do is cancel within the first seven days, and you will never see a charge. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Monday evening, and I will be back Wednesday. Talk to you soon.